wasn't finished yet. <laughs> okay. Um, so we are at the New Scotland Historical Society, the 26th of September 2007, approximately 1.10 p.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Charles Richard Carson, June 12, 1923, Oneida, New York. Okay. What was your educational background prior to entering service? Well, high school, uh, two years of college, St. Bonaventure. Right. Three years of law school in Brooklyn. Brooklyn law school. Okay. Now that was before you went into service. Uh, well, that was after. So what was they went to? A, 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 a school on the GI Bill. Oh, okay. Um, what was your educational education prior to going in, though, into service? High school. In high school. Okay. Um, where were you when you heard about Pearl Harbor? grandmother and grandfather for Sunday dinner. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your reaction or the reaction of the family? No, they were rather shocked. Okay. Couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Alright. Did you enlist or did, were you drafted? I went to enlist and uh, hadn't registered with the draft board yet. So they sent me back to enlist in Utica, New York, and they sent me back home and said I had to sign up for the draft. And I did get a draft card, went back the next day, and uh, they put me in the Navy. Okay, so you select, did you select the Navy? Yes. Why did you decide to enlist? Uh, I don't remember, I know there was three of us went together. Mm -hmm. down to Utica, and they sent us to Albany for our physical exam. Okay. Um, why did you select the Navy? I don't remember. Okay. I didn't think. I guess I do now. I didn't think about it. And my older brother was in the Army, and he told me about his training down in Alabama, and I didn't want to go through that, okay. so I thought the Navy would be much better. <laughs> All right, now, um, when did you, in, when were you inducted into the service? Um, I know you have to hear January 43? January. Okay. Four, I was trying to think of what your date. Yeah. January. Uh, 14, if it says 14. Now you went to Samson. Yes. When you arrived at Samson, was it uh, in full operation, or were they still under? Was it under construction? I believe it was in full operation. Mm -hmm. What was it like at Samson? How long were you there? Through a boot camp. Uh, it was cold. In January '43. It was cold, wintry. One of the things I remember most about it was after the wooden decks in the, in the barracks, and after mopping the floor, you go you get back and run and slide down the middle of the floor on the ice. There were trees. Trees, huh? <laughs> what kind of heat did you have in the buildings? Just wood stoves, or? I do not recall mm -hmm. if there was any, any what it was. Mm -hmm. there was. The reason it was free that there was no cellars. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. They said on uh, concrete blocks. Mm -hmm. Not off the top. Okay. Um, what else do you recall about training there? Anything else? Um, not much except going in at uh, two weeks of mess, mess camping, mess cooking, they call it, which comprised of cleaning the tables and mopping the floors. And then uh, after uh, boot camp was completed, we were given two weeks 
vacation and they're reporting back to Santa and then another two weeks of less cooking. Less. Okay. Where did you go after Samson? Went to uh, Torpedo School in Newport, Rhode Island. Now, did you select the submarine service? Did you volunteer for that or were you assigned? I volunteered. Why did you decide to do that? In New London, Connecticut. Now, how long was the torpedo school in uh, Newport? It was eight weeks. Okay. And then um, your submarine school in New London. <clears throat> Submarine school like? What did they have you do there? Did you go on submarines and train on the submarine? Yes. Old, old submarines. Mm -hmm. Go out in the morning and um, go up, practice going out, going up and down. Mm -hmm. Were these World War One era submarines, or were they? Yeah, they were old. Mm -hmm. Plank holder? Is that what you were? They usually called it a plank holder if you were the first yeah. member of the crew. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, plank holder. Yeah. And we you know, went to see uh, out there and uh, uh, forced us to practice going up and down. How was it different than the, the ones you trained on? This must have had uh, a snorkel and so on. No, oh, it snorkel. didn't. No, that's too early for snorkel. No, that's true. It's not 44. Yes. Uh, after the war. Yes, right. I, I didn't think of that. Well, 44. What was your uh, job, specific job on the submarine? I was a torpedo. Okay. Well, I was a seaman when I went aboard. Uh huh.
torpedo men, you know, ranked torpedo men. Mm -hmm. They had to perform routine things on the, on the torpedo. And they would, uh, you know, we had to help them and show them, and show, show us what they're doing routinely. Now, now what, did, what were the routines? What did you have to do to the torpedoes? Well, at first they were run on uh, alcohol, and later on they were battery operated. We had to you know, check everything, and check the engine, and it was running on, and check the fuel, and see it was up to where it's supposed to be. Do you ever have trouble with the torpedoes? Uh, <clears throat> I know early on with the Navy, especially with the, the torpedoes, the planes dropped, they had a lot of duds and so on. Did you have much trouble, much problems with them? Or? We, uh, not to start with, we didn't. <clears throat> and the one patrol we took out, all electric torpedoes, run on electric batteries. And we fired, well, let's see, the forward room had six torpedo tubes, and the after room had four, and there's ten. And they all, and they all had uh, backups, you know, refills. Let's get off. And so we fired a lot of torpedoes anyway up off the uh, coast of Japan. And never hit anything. So that makes sense to cap it. And then go back and then we next to the lower we got were the old timers. So you found they were more reliable? We we thought they were, yeah. Now these were the alcohol? Yeah. Torpedoes opposed to the battery driven. Well, I mean, that's what we figured. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was yeah. your living conditions like inside the, the sub? Everybody had, uh, had uh, a bunk. I mean, uh, in, the, in the forward room, they had uh, <coughs> torpedoes for reload along, all along the front, each side. And they had bunks underneath them. Oh, so you slept in the torpedo room too? Yeah, and then also there's a, a torpedo loading hatch over right in the rear end of the room mm -hmm. where you loaded the torpedoes from top side at an angle and then that to a ladder like and they put them on. And uh, I, there was two bucks up in that loading hatch, and I slept on one of them. Most of the time, you know, I'm going night to work out, so most of the time my sleeping was early morning and to lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Now, how Describe the process in loading a torpedo into the tube. How, how did you do that? How many did it take to do that? Well, they had a, a, a pulley with a rope. Mm -hmm. to put a th in the back of the torpedo had a, you know, a hole like this big around and they put a thing in there with a pulley on it. Put the rope in there and you just keep pulling the rope until it went in the tube. How long did it take to load a tube? Well, not very long. It was all practice. Mm -hmm. You can do it in a hurry. You know, 30 seconds maybe. Now, um, after your shakedown cruise, cruise where were, you, were you assigned? Did you go right to the Pacific? or? Oh, yes. After mm -hmm. the shakedown cruise mm -hmm. and training up in Portsmouth. Okay. When did you go out to the Pacific? Approximately a month and a year. I don't know, I'd have to look it up. But I 
Yeah. Okay, you got June 44, you reached Pearl Harbor. Oh, okay. Okay, and then you left there in July. Um, did you do most of your combat missions off Japan itself? The Philippines, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, East China Sea, and the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. When was your first ship that you sunk? Yes. <laughs> All right. Your first ship was uh, in July 23rd. You sunk the 5,900-ton-plus uh, Japanese cargo uh, Japanese cargo ship. So it looks like most of the ships you sank were cargo ships, except. Um, Saipan in December of 44, you and the Sea Devil attacked a uh, Japanese carrier. Did they sink it? Um, which you, it says you put it out of action for the remainder of the war. Um, probably your biggest kill was on the 19th of December in Mindanao. What was, can you tell us about that? Yeah, that, that first carrier. Uh, didn't sink. Yes. And it took off and wound up in Nagasaki. And uh, when they dropped the atom bomb there, it went down mm -hmm. in the harbor. They never got it fixed to get out to, go out to sea. Then they won uh, on December 19th, 1944. Uh, 44, yes. in like 15, 20 minutes. The first one stopped it dead in the water, and the second one, the, uh, I'm not sure if the first one went, uh, hit their engine room, and then maybe the next one, yeah, and the next one hit maybe their ammunition supply. Went down 15, 20 minutes. Now, when a, a ship was hit, could you hear the hit? Oh, yes. Yeah, you could hear the explosion. <clears throat> so basically, within um, a half a year, you sank quite a few Japanese ships. Yes. I look at it, one, two, three. Four, at least four cargo ships or tankers, and then you severely damaged the carrier, and then you sank a carrier. Guys on a ship made it, mm -hmm. and 
Now these are, each one of these is a uh, merchant. merchant ship that you saw. Yeah. Now do you know where you are in that picture? Uh, I think so, yes. Now, uh, <clears throat> you went back in, in February of 45 for repairs. Mm -hmm. what, what did, why did you need repairs? Just from in the uh, on duty? And the sinking of the, the Unruh Japanese carrier, we were attacked by uh, Japanese destroyers dropping death charges. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them hit close, which we didn't know how close, but we were at the time we could tell it was close. Uh, just off the forward torpedo roll. And submarines uh, have a, a around it so many feet apart. They have a large steel beam. This one hit just off the starboard side of the torpedo room, and it shook us up pretty good. And uh, as it turned out, sound equipment, their, their propellers, mm -hmm. their engines. And when they left, uh, which was maybe three or four hours, we sat there. And uh, we surfaced and we were uh, the, uh, one of the Engine uh, axle to the one of the propellers got bent, and we were making a lot of noise. So they tried to go just on the one propeller, and the other side to go to the run, and we had to go to Midway. And then they sent us to Pearl. and dry dock and figured out what was wrong and things that were wrong like with the damage that the one that hit in the forward or rear room and the damage in the back engine room and the after torpedo room. And they decided they couldn't fix this there if we had to go to uh, San Francisco. So we went in there and put us in dry dock and they couldn't fix this area. We had to go all the way back around to the horseman match to get repaired. 
Now, how long did it take to repair this? That was uh, June, the 6th. June the 6th of 44. Okay. 44. D-Day. Are you, are you meaning? V-E-Day. V-E-Day. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <coughs> that was in April 45. 45. Mm -hmm. So anyway, by the time we got repaired and got back to Pearl Harbor, we were out. See practicing uh, picking up down fly boys, mm -hmm. and we got a call that the war was over. And uh, so our captain asked for permission to come into Burrow, and they denied it, and we went in anyway and celebrated. Um, now, you ended up uh, also on another submarine. What was that? Oh, that was, you know, that was after the war. The, uh, you know, after the war was over, they go, <coughs> you know, they're looking over all the personnel on the boat. Point system for discharging mm -hmm. and a certain number of points. And one guy uh, who was a torpedo had got had been married when he was in the, when we were back in repaired. So he had more points than I did when I was single. And he didn't want to go back to the States. <laughs> so uh, I was next in line and they called me in and asked me if I wanted to go. I'm sure. So put me on a September that was going back and uh, went through the canal, went into New Orleans, and then went up to uh, Newport, Rhode Island, and they transferred me to the Gunnel. I was there on that until I got discharged. Um, January of 46. Yeah. Okay. And the refugees went from there to... Now you, in this forum that you sent us, you called the Redfish the greatest ship in the Navy. Why? Because the personnel, the guys, a bunch of really nice guys. Mm -hmm. The captain was great. Now you, you mentioned that one person you remember the most saved your life. How, who was that and how did they save your life? Um, I didn't put that on there. Yes, sir. Up lower, the ship was 
Discharged in January '46. Did you make use of the GA bill? Oh yes. Okay. Went to two years mm -hmm. college. Uh, then you only to go to law school. You only had to have two years of college. Mm -hmm. Later on, had before you. Did you ever use the 5220 club? Was that like that unemployment insurance? You got $20 a week for yes, 52 I did. weeks? Yes, not very long. Okay. My brother at that time, my oldest brother, had been discharged out of the yard. He was working the unemployment office. Yeah. <laughs> he made sure that I got up there and <laughs> um, Did you uh, join any veterans organizations at all? American Legion or VFW? Oh, at, at, at the time, I uh, belonged to the VFW. Mm -hmm. This is in Oneida. And, uh, and I moved to this area. And, uh, there was no VFW where I lived in the 40s. So I joined the Legion there. Okay. Did you ever stay in contact with anyone that was uh, in service with you? Oh, sure. Submarine Convention in Sierra Toga a couple of years ago. Yep. Um, how do you think your time in the service had a ch changed or had an effect on your life?
last civil service. Mm -hmm. In retrospect, after serving on the submarine, are you do you regret or are you happy you made that choice? Very happy I made the choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you had one photograph here. You know uh, where and when that was taken, approximately? No, I don't. Okay. If you hold it up, Wayne can focus on it. Oh. You have it here? Yes. This, oh, this is one that was here? Yes, uh, Bob made a copy of it for us. Yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you very much. I'm not sure where that was. 